Many people feel that today they can't do anything because they are lacking something in their life. People, they look at this and they say, if I have this in my life, I will be very happy. I will praise the Lord and glorify God's name. Or other people say, if I don't have this in my life, I will be happy. Some people say, if I have this job, I will be very happy. Some people say, if I don't have this job, I will, have, I will be very happy. Some people say, if I have a wife, I will be very happy. Other people say, if I don't have a wife, I will be very happy. The same thing happened with those who are uh, young. They want to marry. And other people who are married, they want to have another opportunity to, to be single. Those who have a child say, yeah, I will be happy if I have a child. And those who have a child say, I will be happy if I never have a child. So we are not happy for what the circumstances that we, are, we have in our life or we and the way that we are in our life. And we think that always we are in the middle of something that struggle our lives to become a happy person or a blessed person. Now we come to the chapter 3 of the book of Acts and we find out here that the apostles, the followers of Jesus, they have a new challenge and they have to show to the world that they are the body of the church or the body of Christ. Jesus is the head of the church, and we, his people, his followers, are members of his body. But we have to be connected with Jesus as we are in our physical body, connected in heart and mind. So we see in verse 1 that Peter and John were going to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 o'clock as they used it to go. Now, these are the apostles of Jesus. These are the members of the new church that have been born on Pentecost Day. And now they have still the custom and the dedication to go to prayer and the time when people were calling to pray. Why? Because they were Jews. Because they were Israelites. And this, the three o'clock, was the time when the high priest or the priest who helped in that time to deliver the prayers go to the temple and pray for the sins of the people of Israel. We need also to unite all our members to have one heart and one mind set it to do the ministry that God has appointed to the church. But if we don't have the same heart and the same mind to work together in our church, our church looks like a member, looks like a body without members or a body without limbs. Looks like we have orthopedic members in our body. What is an orthopedic member? An orthopedic member is a member that you can see these days in science uh, documented that now people who have no legs or have lost their legs in a, in a battlefield because of uh, uh, service in the military actions, they replace with an orthopedic leg or orthopedic arm. And these people recover their ability to function as they have all their limbs. But when the day end, these people go to rest and take off these limbs or these members from his bodies. And they remain in the condition that they physically are. Now this is in, in, in church we have also this kind of member that they just come on Sunday. They just come when they need God. And they don't participate in a corporative uh, mission. They don't participate in a corporative evangelization program. They don't want to be part of the discipleship or Bible study. They just want to come alone to church, listen a sermon, confessing their mea culpa in front of God, and go back home, washing their conscience for having no be faithful to the Lord during one week. These members come to church. They fill the church on Sunday, but they are not functioning as a corporative members of one body. We need to have one heart, one mind, connected in one body that all members can see the miracles that the church can do when we are all united to serve the Lord. Now, if we continue in verse 2, we find out that here this uh, man who was a crepe from birth was carried to the temple called Beautiful. And he was poor every day there to bed from those who are going into the temple course. Now what we see here, and we have to reflect from these Bible verses, are that we see a war today in need, like this crippled man. Of course, we are talking about the context of Israel people, and probably he was an Israelite. But uh, this man who was crippled from his birth, he had no experience to walk in his life even once. He doesn't know what is to walk in front of people and also in front of God. But he was Help it to be taken into the gates of the church, into the gates of the temple. And it's interesting and controversial to see that the name of the temple is beautiful. And we see a beautiful church with an awful image of a cripple in front of the door of the church. When I come from, I come from, from a Catholic country. 
every city have, and every district have a Catholic church. And I was used to, since I was a child to see cripples, beggars in front of the church every Sunday. But nobody take care about these beggars or these crippled people who were there or lame people who were there. The, the beggars were part of the decoration of the church. People just passed through the gates of the church every Sunday just to go to do their duties in, in worship. And they don't care who were surrounding the church, who were nearby the church, who were asking for help. They were just ignoring and saying, yes, we have a beautiful church here. We have saints inside the church who decorate our church. Mary, Peter, John, the apostle, we're all filling the columns of every uh, uh, part of the church. We have decorations, flowers, everything, and we have the beggars in the door. They didn't care. It was a kind of accessory to have a beggar in the church. It represented the church. Yes, have a, a work to do, have to do good works. And people, they think that, yes, if they, they give their money to the church, they give their offerings to the church, the church will take care of these beggars, so they don't need to take care of these beggars personally. We see today that the church need to take actions of people who are in need, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Who can take these people to God? Who can take these people to the Lord? Who can see those who cannot walk by themselves in front of God because of their sins, because of their life, that are miserable, can have a hand to hold them and say, even though you cannot go by yourself, let me help you to go inside of the presence of the Lord. This cripple represents all of us today. This cripple represents the condition of many nations and represents also the condition of the nation of Israel. I don't have the Bible verse to quote it here, but Isaiah, the prophet, he said that when the kingdom of God will be established, then a cripple will jump. A cripple will jump. And the kingdom of the Lord will be established among Israel. Why this miracle is here as the first miracle that we see in the book of Acts? Because this miracle, God allowed it to happen as a representative of what God promised to the prophet Isaiah many years ago. That when the kingdom of God will be established, a cripple will jump with joy and with glad. We need to think about who are the cripples of these days? Or maybe we think if we in some way, we feel like this cripple. We are not inside of God's holiness, but we are not also inside of the world. We are just in the middle. We are here in this beautiful place, but we are outside of the presence of the Lord. This crippled man that we see here in Eds have a character that we can sympathize and connect with him today. The scripture said that he was a cripple. He have no name to describe. There's no name register here in the chapter 3. So we don't have a name. What does it mean? That means that this message is for all of us today. Like this crippled man who was in that condition since birth, he was not a lame because a lame is a person who by accident, he lost the ability to walk. But this man, he was crippled since the time he was born. So he also, like many uh, psychologists says, that when they see, they talk with these crippled people, in their dreams, they seen themselves walking. They seen themselves functioning with all their muscles and limbs like a normal person in their dreams. They have this kind of dream frequently, says the psychologist. So this crippled man, he also, in his mind, he thought himself, he imagined himself walking inside this beautiful temple, but physically he could not. We sometimes we imagine that we have a holy life, walking with God, praising God, but in our reality, we are ashamed to do that. Something is hiding us to worship with enthusiasm, with passion, with joy in church, regardless of what culture we have. We are American, Korean, or South American, African. We can still worship God with passion, but there is always a sin, a dirty conscience that, done, that, that do not allow us to worship freely to the Lord. He was a man not able to enter into the presence of God because not only his physical condition, but his spiritual condition. He was crippled not only physically, but also spiritually. What is a, the condition of, of the person's spiritual crippled? Well, we can sometimes, from birth, feel that we are not happy. There's something that, from our time of birth, we think that is lacking in our life. As I say, if I have this thing in my life, I will be happy, we think. We dream about that. We dream that if we have this in our life, this job, this career, this family, we will be happy. But we see 
only the external condition of our happiness that is temporary. And we don't focus in the eternal condition of our unhappiness. And if we resolve that problem spiritually, internally, we will be happy forever, not just temporarily. There's an area creeped from the past that rings our present and still immobilize for our future. What is that area this morning? What is that thing this morning in your life that you feel that you are in the middle of the holy, beautiful life that God has in front of you and the past that you have behind of you that don't allow you to go one more step ahead, who don't allow you to walk in the presence of the Lord joyfully and with faith, love, and enthusiasm. We see here this door represents the middle of two worlds, the spiritual world and the secular world. Here, this person was taken and put it every day at the door of the temple. The door is a place of decision. Are you in or are you out? You come in or you, come, or you stay out, outside. The door is always a place of decision. We make decisions every day in our life. And here, this man and those who brought it in, they have to make a the decision. They're going to leave it outside or they're going to take it inside. According to the law, they couldn't take it inside. Why? Because, yes, no disease, no everyone who was crippled or lame could enter in the temple of God, in the holiness of God. That's what the law of David David made this law in Israel, and the, this, the, the Jews, they followed the law of David. But it was not the intention of God. God don't put limits because we don't have limits. We can not think that God won't allow us to come into, the, into His holy presence if we, will, by faith, enter into His holiness. There's only one thing that we need to confess our sins and to walk by faith, knowing that God is able and just to forgive all our sins, iniquities, and mistakes. The door is a place of observation. This crippled man, he knows what's, what's happened inside the temple and outside the temple. He observed everything. He observed who was coming and who was going out. Who, he was observing what's happening outside in the world. When everybody was worshiping inside, he could see what people are doing outside. The Gentiles, the Romans, even the Jews who are no spiritual potential people. They were outside changing coins, trying to pretend to be religious. But they don't care about him. He could see the people inside worshiping God, praising the Lord with joy and enthusiasm, bringing the sacrifice and offering. But he was just in the middle of serving everything. There are sometimes people here in church that come every Sunday that they just come to observe what's going on in the service. They don't participate. They are no members of the church. They are orthopedic members. They just come and see, okay, who is the preacher this week? What is the, the thing of, of, of today? What is the sermon of today? They just observe. The pastor called for, a, for action to participate, to evangelize, to bring more people, to, to, to enroll in a discipleship. But they say, no, 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 no. We are here just observing your ministry. We are here how fruitful you are, how fluent you are, how motivated you are for us. They just observe. They don't participate. They don't take actions. The door is a place also between seeing and holiness. Because many people, they come as orthopedic members to pretend to be Christians. But in the weekdays, they just live a secular life where God is not there walking with them every day. And they are not holding the hands of God in every aspect and every place in their life. What the world is expecting today from the church? What do those who are outside of this door expecting from us, the church, in this 21st century? The world expect to see something in church. And this scripture today gives us the answer. Verse 3 said, when he saw this group of men, he saw Peter and John about to enter. He asked them for money. Peter here is representing faith. Do you want to find Peter in heaven? Oh, it's easy. You just need to go to heaven and see who, has a, who is the person who will try to do whatever unthinkable people will do in their life. You will see Peter jumping out of the boat, walking on waters. You will see P Peter cutting ears to everyone who tried to listen to bad things. He will do with faith, with courage, with Boldness, everything that probably we cannot do in our normal life. You want to find John in heaven? You just need to find the Lord. And he will be always next to the Lord, probably putting his hand on his chest, probably praising the Lord every time. He is the apostle of love. John, he always, in his message, said and quoted the words of the Lord, love one another as the Lord has taught us how to love. But this crippled man, he represents hope. Even though he doesn't know that, he didn't know that. He represents hope in this story. Because without hope, you cannot meet faith and you cannot meet love. It is with eyes of hope. It is with eyes of expecting something. 
This cripple was expecting for money because that's the only thing that he knows for since we was, he was born. What he learned from people is just to receive money, to receive help. Help me here. Help me just, I need to cry and people will help me. Why? I, ha I cannot walk. I can do by myself. Probably his father and his mother already passed away or he was abandoned he was, since he was born and people tried to care. They probably were their friends or were their neighbors or people who had compassion to them. But they, these people, they don't have faith and love. They just have humanity. With humanity, we cannot serve the world. Many people have... These days doing many good jobs better than the church, but they are, are only humanitarian peoples. But they don't show faith. They don't show love to the war. And this war are repeating and repeating, doing what they are doing to stay without hope for the future. As I was preparing this sermon since the last week, I have this picture in my mind that I wanted to share with you. Peter, he was a brave man. He was a man that he doesn't care about what people said. Peter was a person who just jumped into the water without thinking he was going to think or not. He was just as a hurry person that he couldn't see that whatever he do, he can damage others. And when Jesus was arrested, he just took off his sword and cut the, the ear of the servant of the Jews. He will go and speak without thinking, Lord, you are the God. And then and a few hours later, he would say, Lord, don't do that. He could go from spirituality to nominal times just like that. He was a person who just had passion and his passion was enough because he had faith that everything that he do, God will put his favor, God will put his support on him. And that's, that's Peter. Even though he made mistakes, he were criticized, he showed the faith and courage that he had. John. John was just showing kindness to everybody. He was trying to make peace among others. He was trying to reconcile all the, the disciples of Jesus when they tried to, to, to fight each other. They say, no, 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 no. Let's think about love. We are here to love each other. And they feel in love with Jesus. He feels that, yes, nobody can love Jesus more than him. And nobody loves him more than Jesus. But there's a war that is looking for hope. There's a war that is crippled since the time they were born. Let me share this picture with you. When I was seeing these pictures in the news, and when I was preparing this sermon two weeks ago, I was thinking, yes, what did that mean? What is this picture that the war has put their eyes now? We are not talking about Christians. We are not talking about what kind of faith these people have or what kind of religious background we have. they have. We just talk about what people see and people want to see in the world. And people want to see today in church. People saw here just love holding the hand of a crippled person. A person who was crippled since the time he was born. But he doesn't know that he needs hope for his future. He have expectations probably. Like this crippled man. And if and, and humanitarians help him, probably Russia, Russia, China, I don't know. I don't want to put names, but it's what I imagine. But then it comes another person who <laughs> yes, media can know respect. But he's a bald man. He doesn't care what people say about him. He just jumped into the water. I don't care. I'm just into the water and I'm gonna hold the hand of this person, even though I was fighting with this person years ago, and now I'm gonna hold his hand. And I'm going to give him a second chance. A second chance. Why not? Are we here in, in the position to judge the world? Or to show love, compassion, and to show that there is hope and there is faith to walk together? What is the responsibility of the church today? What we have to do today? What people said during this preparation of this interview in, in Singapore, people were disappointed, people were criticizing, people were discouraged and, and negative of this meeting, skeptical of what will happen. And even still, we don't know what's going to happen. We still have our doubts. But the church is still praying. There were 40 days of prayer before this meeting, and we heard the testimony in this church too. There were a pastor who, or a deacon who came to share that. And you can go today to here a few kilometers later, and see that people still 24 hours are praying for the unification of these two countries, North and South Korea. Looks like a puzzle that is impossible to make. Looks like a mess. It's a cube that nobody can put in order. But yes, now we see, at least there's hope that these three countries, North Korea, South Korea, and America, can work together. The time will give us the answer, and God will reveal us His will. I remember the words of our elder Paul, and he said, yes, you see how God is orchestrating all the circumstances. People in, around North Korea cannot speak out against this meeting. Cannot speak out against the unification of North, South Korea and North Korea. 
Japan cannot say anything. They have a scandal there. Russia, China, Canada, every country in this world who opposed to this meeting, they cannot say anything and they are not able to stand against this meeting until it happen. Why? Because God prepared the time. God prepared the way. And we are witness of history. We are witness of history today in the world. When Peter and John, they went to the temple and see this crippled man, he just said two words. Look at us. Look at us. Peter looked straight at him, as John also did, and said, look at us. Not just look at me. Look at us. Look at love. Look at faith. So the man gave his attention. He gave his expectation. And he expected to receive something like money because, because that's the only thing that he knows. Like North Korea, he only thinks that everybody will help him. South Korea, Russia, China, whoever. If he just make these toys, weapons, nuclear toys, then he will receive money. That's only that he wanted money in order to make his people and his leader happy. But there's more than that. They didn't give them money. They give to the crippled men faith and love and let this person give verse to hope. He has expectation, but a positive expectation becomes hope. When you assume faith and love, you will have the result of hope. When you look this Two fruits of the ministry of the church, faith and love together, then you can see that people will have faith, will have love, and they will have hope for the future of their life. What do we should share these days? Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helping him out, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. Now, the church today, they cannot say this word like Peter say, silver and gold I do not have. If some church can say that, well, I don't know what kind of church is that. Because now the church, especially here in Korea, there's no a poor church in, in Korea. And the church have enough money to serve the world. Peter, he didn't have gold. He didn't have silver. The people in the temple have. The Jews have. The Sadducees, they, they were rich people. They were worshiping God. But they didn't help this this man in the way that he needed to be helped. Je Peter said, what I have, I give to you. And they help him up, giving them what they have. What do they have? They have faith and they have love. We just need to do that this week. Find a person who have expectation from someone who give it a light of hope for their future, for their life. You know who are they. You know where they are. These people are the invisible people in church too. That's the people that you don't know their name, but they are always there. Especially here in Korea, when you come to Korea to a church or every place you go, you see that the person sits always in the same place. It's like they put their names in and they make reservation and the next week you see, them, you see them sitting in the same place every week. But you don't know their names. You don't know who they are. Well, I think, yeah, I know. That's the, 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 the lady with the, the glasses and who brings always the scarf in this color. Oh, that's the, the man who always, he, he wear necktie or the, the man who always, he just touch his ear during the sermon. Probably you know who they are. You know who are the, the, this person in your, in your school, in your companies. You know that they are always there, expecting for something, but they are quiet. They don't ask for help. They are just there, taking care of their own problems without hope, without faith. When the cripple, he hold the hand of Peter and John, they could not be the same anymore. They experienced strength. They, he experienced strength, and he experienced a new life. With this hope that he has now. That he could enter in the temple of the Lord. And he could worship God in a way that he never worshipped before. Or it was the first time he worshipped God in his life. He always was outside. He always was at the place of decision. At the door. Between seeing and holiness. Between the war and the people of God. And now he could enter. Holding the hands of faith and love into the temple courts. And praising God with all his enthusiasm, joy and strength. Verse 8 to 10 said, he jumped into his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all people saw, the, saw him walking and praising God, they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. When you have love, your passion to worship the Lord. When you stop to walk and jump in front of the Lord, or praise your, your God with your hands raised to him, are you ashamed of your fellowship with God and you worship God to God? Have you loved that passion? 
Is there something that stopped you to walk and, as the psalm says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and joy? We bring to church the loads, the heavy loads that we have every Sunday. But the problem is that we don't leave our loads here in the cross of Jesus. After we spend one hour listening to message, we carry our problems in our shoulders again and we take it back home. It's time to put all our problems here and all our, our limits here and say to God, God, I want to walk by faith from today. I want to live by faith from today. I want to experience your love from today and live every day with hope and expectation that you're going to make every day a miracle in my life. I want to leave all my problems here on your cross, here on the presence of your people because I believe that you are here. This beggar, he held the hand of John and Peter because now he understands that he was holding the hand of faith and love. All the people were astonished. And they came running to them in the place called it Solomon's Colony. And there, they could see love. They could see faith, but they also see hope, worshiping God together. As I finish this message today, let's remember what the Apostle Paul said for us today, the church. This is what happened 20,000 years ago, but these words are for today, for our church. 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, Now these three re things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love, says the Apostle Paul. Is love beating in your heart, warming up your faith, and delivering joy and faith and enthusiasm into your life that you can have hope for every day and for the next week? You need faith in your soul because faith makes all things possible. You need Hope in your mind because hope made all things work. And you need love in your heart because love makes all things beautiful and easy. You just need to call today on faith and love. And you will see that, yes, the hope that you have in your mind we will become a reality every day in your life. You will see miracles in your life. So let's have a revival again, as we said the last week. Let's have a spiritual revival, spirit-filled revival. As we learned from today's passage, yes, let's get up with hope. Let's walk with faith and let's worship with love every day of our life. So every Sunday we will come with a testimony, what God has done in our life. And in this way, just doing these three simple steps, every day of our life, we can become, as Jesus said, and the Spirit said, more than conquerors in his name.